If you're going to be nasty, be nasty. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, my man. How's it going? I'm good. Good to see you. Who'd you just pull a card for? Uh, her name is Martina Garcia. Martina, don't listen. Just get your stuff together, okay? You need to up your credit score. Your credit score is crappy, I can tell, okay? And if you're looking for a man, is she looking for a man? You're looking for a man? I don't know. She didn't say. She didn't say. What'd she say? Ultra vest again. Ultra vest again. I don't know what that means, but Again. that's cool. That's great. <laughs> she wants more. She wants more. Okay, yeah, you know, look, you need to go on Tinder. You need to go on Grindr, whatever you like to use. You need to handle it. You need to put yourself out there. You're too conservative. Well, no one likes that. You don't. You hold out. Just just put it out there, okay? You're putting in repressive energy into the universe. The universe doesn't like that shit. If you feel something in the moment, just do it, okay? And that's going to help you tremendously, okay? You're welcome. You can Venmo me anytime. The protest shop. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. Good to be here. Yeah, man, it's exciting. It's they, hot as hell up here. It's always hot as hell up here. Damn. But th that's why it's the green room. It's not yeah. supposed to be comfortable. Woo! <laughs> I feel like I'm in the motherland right now. Uh, <laughs> this is our third pre-show show. Yeah, I'm excited. I love having you guys. Thank man. you. I'm so we, excited. We like being here. It's so much fun. Uh, and he tells me you guys have friends coming? Yes. Hey, look. We, we, we're starting to bring people up. You started to yeah, bring. After yeah. your niece and nephew were like, okay. Did Okay, so... True story is that th that was their first comedy show ever. They're 17 and 22, and I'm I, in my head, they're still 12. So then the first... I mean, even to me, they're the babies. Yes, you know? the first comedian comes out and starts talking about vaginas and penises. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is what I brought them to. What is my sister going to say? L. Martina, since her credit is very good. <laughs> good job, Martina. Just like me, baby. Just like me. <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, no, I, I was looking, I was like, oh, kids, you know? Yeah. But then I forget about it quick. I think about it, but I don't really change <laughs> myself. I'm like, oh, damn, they're kids. Not too bad. Their but choice. I looked over, and they were they're loving they it. were cracking well, up. Man, man, the access to information kids have nowadays, they were Googling this stuff when they were seven. No one wants to know that. I'm the one that's still Googling uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. I, I still haven't had the conversation with my dad, so. Yeah, there in, you go. In, in my world, I'm still a virgin. You, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing. You're not allowed to use that word. Like that. <laughs> let me just tell you that much. The word doesn't like it being used by you. I don't even know how to spell it anymore. Yeah. Martina says you're funny. Oh, <laughs> what's up, baby? How you doing? Well, Martina, you can still get here to the show. Yeah, 1702 Lincoln Boulevard, Mystic Journey Yoga. It's next to a crystal gallery, and you still. I mean, still got like 45 minutes. Yeah. So don't be lazy. Martina. So who do we have on today? Today we got great comedians. We got. Look, I didn't even try again, and we got. Uh, equal amount of women and uh, men wow. without trying and uh, we got DJ Sandu we got Betsy Cox who actually came last time I think you met her uh, Jacqueline Marfugi Patrick Quinn who's hilarious Jenny Jennings she just moved here from New York so oh, I'm excited cool. to see her yeah she reached out to me yeah yeah and uh, Saad Alessa he's he's new not new but I I don't I haven't met him in person. Someone told me about it. He's been highly recommended. Okay. So we just friends online. A lot of times I meet people for the first time here. Really? I really, like, none of these people I've met in person besides Betsy. Oh, wow. I've never met any of them. It's just online relationships. I see their videos. Mostly other comics that I trust will be like, yo, this person's good. So if there's a comic out there that wants a shot to be in the show, what can they do? Nothing. I'm not looking for you. <laughs> um... Not a chance. No, I mean, I, I would love, like, reach out uh, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, drop video clips. And I always like, I love finding new what, comics. What's your favorite kind of comedy? Real. Yeah? And, and I know that sounds, that's like an easy word to say, because real is different to everybody. But to me, it's uh, un uncensored authenticity. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're going to, like... Everyone's different, and I respect that. But if you want to curse, curse, but do it for a reason. You're not right. just there cursing for no reason. Or if you're going to talk about a subject, talk about it full throttle. But don't go there if you're not willing to go there, yeah. if that makes sense. Like, yeah. if you're going to talk about abortion, and that's that's a topic of interest, and you're going to... No, I'm just saying, that's not really not my thing. But if you're going to talk about it, then go there. Go for it. And, and be, you know, be well-educated about the subject and understand that people are going to have real strict viewpoints about it. And if you're okay with that, that's great. But make sure you have something really to say and be well informed right. but if you're going to hit that subject and make a a mistimed basic joke right why would you do that don't be controversial for just being controversial yeah don't be controversial just to use a word but you didn't say anything right, right? if you're going to go there at least make sure the audience leaves thinking something even if they disagree with you that's okay you don't yeah. have to agree but at least if they can leave and go oh that was an interesting perspective don't agree with it but i can respect their perspective right and that's kind of like that's the stuff that i like 
And what I like about this audience for the, the, the two times that we've been here is that it's a small, intimate group and they're really honest about their reactions. They don't hold back. They don't hold back. I love it. I love, uh, it's always been awesome to have a comedy show at a spot where people aren't just trying to get really drunk. Yeah. Like, people drink here, but not once have I had an audience member who was drunk or even after because the environment doesn't cater to that. And as a comic, it, it got really irritating just performing at dingy places where everyone's always drunk or trying to get drunk. And it was just dirty and there was no green room. There's no place for a comic in their comics. Not only are they doing it for free, but they're doing five minutes. Yeah. And so for me, it's like I got to change all of that, create an amazing atmosphere. And personally, I've always liked smaller rooms. Like one of my favorite rooms to ever perform is uh, the belly room at the mm -hmm. comedy store. Because to me, I like being able to look at people's faces. Yeah. Comedy's, comedy in, in general is very intimate. Yeah, It's an it's a intimate art. And I think most, even the comedians that have blown up will agree with that, even though they sell stadiums and it's a big deal and that's awesome, congrats. But I think most of them still in their heart, like Dave Chappelle, he performs at small spots throughout the nation. He loves popping into small little rooms yeah. because it, you get to, I get to look at you in their eye. I get to feel like, even if you don't laugh, even if you, even if you don't laugh, I might see you laughing just looking at your eyes. You know, and that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Like sometimes people don't want to laugh because they're their situation and they're own bearers. <laughs> but I can tell in their eyes they're laughing. Yeah. And that's cool. Like I connected with you. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we went to an open mic several years ago, um, and there were a lot of established comedians there mm -hmm. because it was an intimate group and I could see that they were just having fun. They were just enjoying trying their stuff well, out. I mean, but let's be real, man, like and I mean, every big comedian, and when you watch them, they're like, everything got less funny the more famous you got and the more money you made. Because it got really serious. Right. Like, we all get into this just to have fun. Yeah. Even acting, like, that's what I do a lot, and I, I love it. It's so fun. But then when you start talking about budgets and the, the, what, what is, uh, how much is it going to be? How many days are you going to film? And, you know, how do we make this back? And it gets real serious real quick. Yeah. And I get it, it's a business, but you, it, the fun creeps away a little bit, yeah. right? And so I think it's cool and intimate us to bring that back. Well, you know I'm glad I mean? you have the space. I'm very, very blessed. And I'm, I'm excited thank that you, we thank get you, to Thank you, Darcy. Thank you, Darcy. Yes, thank you, Darcy, Darcy. yes. We, we, at some point, we need to have her up here to interview her. She definitely was. She's usually so busy when she's here. And today, she's flying in from Colorado because she was in a, a retreat in Costa Rica. Oh, nice. Doing her ayahuasca. Oh, poor thing. Yeah, poor thing. Oh, wow. So uh, she won't be here today. But uh, next next September for sure. Yeah, we have to uh, talk to her in advance to make sure that we. Yeah, yeah, she'd give love her a to spot. do this. She'd love yeah. to do this. But I'm excited. I'm excited for you to interview these comedians because I always get excited to meet them here. Like it's weird. I usually meet most of them for the first time. Oh wow! Or s sometimes, of course, I've known some from other shows. But there's been very few comics here that I've been, I would say, like intimate, like good friends with. Yeah. Few, like one. I had Rachel in the first two shows. I've known her for years. Okay. Um, and outside of that, maybe one or two comics. But besides that, it's all been new people. Nice. And that's been cool because comics are putting out a good word about the show. And so I'm getting other good people to perform on the show. Well, I like the fact that people are coming back to watch the pre-show shows. They and, love it, man. And, and they get to enjoy learning about new comedians. The comics love it. I yeah. like the comics love it. And they love how you do the card. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Oh, man. I get scared when you do it. You're too good Why? at this. He's really, honestly, I joke, but he's very good. you want good to pull it or you want me to get it for you? What's better? Up. You want me to pull it for you? Pull, you, you pull it for me. Or you want to pull it yourself? Uh, no, you pull it, pull it for me. It's just a matter of preference. I, uh, you can pull it for me. Let's see what he comes up with. Go down here. So there's something better. Um, I think we pulled these cards for you last time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, 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 I think what I told you, well, I'm, I'm not going to go there. The opportunity or the project that they're putting in your hands right now, I feel like it's not fulfilling enough. So hold, I would hold on a little bit for, like, I feel like there's something that's potential that's going to turn into real. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Because the one that they're offering you is not going to fulfill your creativity, your potential, and it's not giving you the credit that you do, that you deserve. So I would hold off just a little bit and let the other one. It's kind, I feel like there's just a lot of negotiations going on that you're not you don't have to be part of. But as soon as everything just solidifies a little bit, 
it'll come to you. But I would hold off. Just Are you telling me to be patient? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No. Every I, time I see him, just be patient. Be patient, Pratesh. Yeah, because if I told you, you probably wouldn't do it. So. No, I know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the cool things is, uh, for those of you that follow me on Put It Together podcast, Patricia has been a guest, and then you've been on you've been on two episodes of Conversations. Yeah, which I have a blast with you on Conversations. It's so fun. It's blast. Uh, can you tell them what we do on Conversations? So well, can... Conversations we kind of co-host and we just have a topic. I think uh, I forgot what was the topic. Yeah, first topic was kind of like who raised you, like growing up, and the second one was more about victim mentality, yeah. victimization, and how you know people can be responsible for their own trauma and we can help heal people yeah. instead of projecting all of their crap onto the society which causes a lot of the problems we have now but anyway if, that, if that's of interest to you you can i can talk about that forever as yes. you know so for those of you who have been watching uh, conversations is a spin-off of put it together podcast and my guests like pretend get to come back on the show and they pick the topic that they want to talk about and i kind of just i find out about the topic like a day before so I really don't have any preparation time. And we just sit there and you la- you lead and I follow. Yeah, I mean, there's no prep. And that's the best part of it. It's actual real, real conversation that we're feeling in the moment. And we're interacting with people asking questions. I think that's the most important. I don't really like prep. I like to have a nice topic. Yeah. But prepara- that's just how I work. Pre- preparation, there's certain times where it's necessary, of course. But in general, um, prep can make it inauthentic. Right. You know, like even if I prep something today, what I may feel tomorrow is might be different or I might get a new thought or an idea. Why wave that to the side? Because it wasn't prepared. Mm-hmm. Even with stand up, I have ideas that I want to talk about, but things happen. You see things in the audience. There might be a conversation you had with someone that just entered. That's hilarious. And that might be something you want to talk on stage. Why would I eliminate all those? That That's ca- gold. Yeah. And I'd eliminate that because I didn't write it in my set doesn't make any sense we to me. We have very similar ways. Yeah. I have certain points that I want to talk about. Talk about. But as I walk on stage. It just I, hits you. Like, you st- okay. I just stay open. Yeah. And then sometimes I might hit one point. I might hit more. Or I might hit nothing that I thought about. And it'll be all improv. Yeah. And improv is my thing anyway. So it's fun that way. Yeah. Well, the, I, 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 mean, I told you the first time that I actually performed at the Ice House. I had this whole opening line ready. I was like, I'm going to kill with this. But the girl in front of me sang A Whole New World before she got off stage. That was her ending joke. So I got on stage, and the first thing that came to mind is like, well, you heard a princess sing. Not time for a queen to talk. <laughs> and everybody just lost it, and I started laughing. Yeah, but see, that's gold. Yeah, and then I go, oh, shit, what was I going to say next? And everything was just on the moment. I mean, comedy's all around you. It's how you look at life. So mm-hmm. every situation's funny. And if you knew my relationship more, it's a joke. It's, it's a just, joke. It's a whole joke. All right, I'm going to go down. I think someone's yelling my name. Is that you going? Yeah. Hey, what's up, dog? Hi. I'm coming. All right, let's go interview guys. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for Tesh. We'll yeah. see you back downstairs. So for those of you, again, this is the Barefoot Comedy Show. This is a pre-show show. And uh, we are at 1702 Lincoln Boulevard in Venice Beach. So if you're in the area, I got you another victim. Hi. Daniel. Welcome. Jenny. 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 Hi, Jenny. Come on over. Have a seat. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Did he warn you about the pre show show or is this new to you? Yeah, no, I emailed everybody. I forget what I forget. You forget? Well, have a seat. I'm Daniel Garza. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Everybody, folks, this is uh, Jenny Jenkins. Jen- Jen- Did uh, I get the right? Jenny Jennings. Jenny, yeah, sorry. So you can say it however you want. It doesn't matter. Jenny Jennings. How you doing, ma'am? Good. I uh, hear you're from New York. No, I'm from Atlanta. Oh, he, he told me everything wrong. He just wrong. said the same thing. Did, yeah, we just, yeah. Is he trying to embarrass me? Is that what he did? You know, maybe. <laughs> How Sorry, are you I'm doing like today? Gum. That's okay. It's all cool. <laughs> well, this right is now. the pre-show show, so we do this every show. Cool. Uh, a little chance for the people at home to get to know the comedians. Okay. Get you out there to my people. Nice. Uh, my show is usually called... Uh, Put it together podcast, and we do that, and then we have another show. Okay. Uh, but this is a chance for the comedians to just talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. Just took a bus ride here. Oh, did you? I did. I don't have a car here in LA, so I take bus rides a lot. Yeah. Um, How's that? It's okay, except for when your card for some reason isn't working. I just loaded it the other day. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. That's my boyfriend, Christian Ramirez, behind the camera. Hey, how are you? Uh, this is Jenny. So, uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Now, now that we get our information Love correct. Atlanta. Right. Yes. Robert Stewart is my 
question. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what brought you to L.A.? I've always wanted to move out here um, before I even started stand-up. I mean, I'm, I'm an actor as well, and I'm, I came out here about three years ago to study yeah. with Leslie Kahn and Company. Okay. It's like a acting studio for... It's kind of like works for breaking down scripts for sitcoms, and there's there's just no sitcoms there. You know, there's not much comedy that's filmed in Atlanta, so I'd always wanted to move out here, and then when I started doing stand-up in Atlanta, I was like, well, I might as well just move. I was going to say, because at- Atlanta has started to become a real big hub. Yeah, it for sure has. Now, they went through a little controversy earlier this year, but things seem to be stabling out a little bit. Um... I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll take that as a no, it hasn't. Uh, but because it, a lot of the things filmed in Atlanta are drama series, correct? Yeah, and I'm all for I love, I mean, just book me on anything. Yeah. I'll be on anything. <laughs> I don't really care. I'll be wide in a show if they want me to, yeah. I'll do anything you want. You want to be a clown? I'll be a clown. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, it, ju- it just seemed like a good life change, and I had a lot of distractions there. I mean, all my family, best friends, and it was I felt like it was kind of hindering me from continu- right. going full force. So, And, and I, I really do believe that, because I'm from Texas, and I started acting in Houston, yeah. which is home to a lot of independent films. Mm-hmm. But I thought if I really want to soak it in, right. i got to come to L.A. Yeah. So, yeah, I, exactly. I get you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how long had you been acting before you moved out here? Um, I mean, I had done theater in high school, but like, re- like really, like getting signed with an agent, and it was not until after college that I decided that I wanted to pursue it as a career. My parents were like, <laughs> "Okay, well, good luck. <laughs> good luck with that." What were you studying in college? I, I had, I changed my major like four times. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I was slowly but surely getting closer to being in front of the camera, but originally I was like, well, maybe I'll graduate and I'll work as a PA and I'll work behind the scenes and then they'll be like, you, we want you. And I was like, this is ridiculous. If I'm going to do it, I need to just fully go after and quit right. tiptoeing around what I really want to do. But I got a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism. It was like emphasis in mass media arts, which is like telecommunications, basically. Nice. So. Uh- Tell us a little bit about your comedy. How did you fall into stand-up comedy? I think that there's only so much that you can control with acting and, um, you know, casting directors and they want this, they want that. And I'd always loved making people laugh, you know, on camera. And I was like, well, why don't I just... And I knew I could write, so I was like, why don't I just try this? And then when I came out here three years ago, it was the first time I had started actually just going to stand-up shows. And I was like, I mean, I That's have no it. choice but to try it. So, And then I just fell in love with it. So, yeah. Uh, where do you get inspiration for your comedy? I'm sure some of these questions are typical questions that you get yeah. asked. Um, I mean, I love the Golden Girls. <laughs> Girl, so who doesn't? Honestly. As, as gay men, we have to. Right. It's, it's, it's in the contract. They're, yeah. they're amazing. I mean... I've always been a huge fan of that show, and I used to watch it all the time with my family, and um, I think they're great. My, I mean, I love watching, do you know who Beth Stelling is? She's probably like my stand-up comedian inspiration. Okay, I have to go. She's been on Comedy Central, Conan a couple times. Um, okay. The stand-ups, which is on Netflix. Uh, yeah, she's great. Okay, we'll have but, to look her up and make sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Seeming how you made that decision to change your path, if there's somebody out there watching in Atlanta or somewhere USA, and they're like, damn, I really just want to do it, yeah. what words of wisdom would you throw their way? I would say... <laughs> she said with a big sigh. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, some people, it is a hustle. It's not, you know... Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes you're like, well, I want to do this or I want to do that. And then you can talk about it. All but the only way you're going to get better is to just keep getting up. And you're going to fail. You're going to suck sometimes. Sometimes you're going to do great. It's, you know, it's just the part of the process. So yeah. I guess just have a thick skin and surround yourself with positive people because 
Can't yeah. get anything done if you're around shitty folks. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Sorry, it's, can I cuss on Yes, please. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> we encourage that. Yes, okay. yes. Great. If you didn't, I would judge you afterwards. <laughs> She was trying to be nice about all She's this. She's too good. Uh, yeah, because uh, you come to Hollywood or you come to LA and it, there's always going to be people who want to collaborate. That that seems to be like a popular word. Right. But to find the right people to do it with, yeah. that's the key thing. Right, for sure. Right? Yeah. I, yeah, don't waste... I, I feel like, too, also when you get older, you're like, I don't have time to, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like... Uh, the, there's some people that will be a lot of talk, and you can't get sucked into it. You have to just stay focused, and you'll know if it is yeah, the right. Yeah, instinct. Right. Yeah, your gut feelings. I right. feel like we try to be really logical about the strategy. The, the, the strategy. Uh, strategy is the right word. Strategic. Yeah. How to be strategic in, in Hollywood. But you really do have to trust your, your gut and your intuition on this. Right. Right? Yeah, for sure. And there's so many different paths you can take with, with stand-up comedy. There's not just one way. So yeah. if someone's like, you got to do this, and you got it's like there's a million different ways that you can make it or, yeah. you know. Because yeah. I just started okay. taking, I took my first stand-up comedy class October of last year. And it was more of, they came to to SAG and we took a workshop and they're like you're funny and I'm like I'm always funny <laughs> right and then I went to class and I was like oh, <laughs> oh I'm not that yeah. funny oh, I'm funny at the dinner table yeah, on Thanksgiving yeah. and, but then I realized that I was trying to follow somebody else's logic right. yeah and then I tried my own thing and of course having a boyfriend who is not afraid of being a critic right. helps a lot <laughs> So, which is which worked out great. As much as I hate it sometimes, uh, it works out great because he's honest with me. Yeah. And that's really cool. So I think that's another key thing is find people who are honest with you. And, right. And learn to accept it. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And uh, so now I do stuff my way. Like, yeah. I'll tell jokes my way. And people, can you, there was really, you can tell when people are being fake Right. If it's right? authentic, yeah, you have to be your authentic self, and you're always going to find there. Your stuff is not going to work for. I mean, think about how many. I mean, everyone has a different sense of humor, so you know, different people are from different backgrounds, different upbringings. So your comedy might not be for everybody, but you're going to find your audience, and that's what's so fun when you do. You know. And that was the other thing that I realized is that. Not everybody's gonna get my style of comedy, right? But it, and I can't take that personal. Yeah. Um, do you remember the the first time that you were on stage and you were like, "Shit, I'm funny." Well, you know, my first time ever getting up, I had like all my friends and family, <laughs> which is terrible to do. It's like I, I literally had 30 of them there. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm going to be on Netflix tomorrow. But, and then this your second time. I Literally, my second time getting up was like at a coffee shop. There were like three people there. Two of them were sleeping. Like, it, it wasn't. And I'm like, oh, this is comedy. Here we go. So... <laughs> You're like, sir, I'm telling jokes, <laughs> right. sir. That was the punchline. Somebody tickle him. Yeah. <laughs> Make it sound do good. Do we need an ambulance? Um, so one other thing that we do here, I'm also uh, a Reiki Master card reader. Yeah. So one of the things that I do is I have my guest pull a card. So oh would you like gosh. to pull a card? This, I've never done this before. You've never done this? No. Do you mind? Oh, sure. These are very... <laughs> These are more about personal love, like okay. self love cards. So I'm, I'm okay. being, I'm being real. So just you're not going to be her. like, ooh, you're no, struggling no. with. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we can, right. I mean, if it'll, we'll if it'll, help, if it'll help your career, I'll, I'll go. Long bus ride. If it'll help your career, I'll be like, she is in trouble. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Gentlemen out there, please stop. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Any card? Any card. All right. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> okay. And then you get to read what it. I do. Go okay. ahead and, and turn it over and read it. Okay. Satisfaction. You let the energy of love guide you to self-approval so that others no longer define who you are. Hmm. How's that? Well, well, well. See? I like this game. It wasn't okay. all that bad. Yeah, it wasn't all that bad. So, it's a game, um, I know. You let, 
you let the energy of, of love guide you to simple rules so that others no longer define who you are. So here's what I'm going to say on this part is, um, I, I know you're in comedy, but I feel like there is a, there's a switch, there's a detour career, there's a detour path that you want to take. And I'm going to say either writing or producing something that you're ready to, to put out there. Stop asking 20 people what they think because you're going to get 20 different answers. Mm -hmm. You already, your intuition and your gut feeling is already telling you that it's ready to show. Right. So if you wrote something or producing something or it's a new character-ish type because I feel you that being you being something different, right. I feel like it's a really good time to put that out in the air and let people see that so that they can see who else you are. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're at this, you're in a really beautiful point in your life right now where you're balanced and centered and everything has been cleansed. So you either discarded, you either got rid of people, places, or a thing that is no longer of any good to you. And the moment you let go of that energy, it opened up the space for new and fresh energy for you. Yeah. So this is a really good time for you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> That's so I know you want to. Are you? <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Careful what you ask oh for. <laughs> Nobody else is here yet, so. What are those? These are angel cards. Those are gold. Yeah, so these are angel cards. So I'm gonna put these down for you. Okay. See, folks, this only happens here on this show. <laughs> they think it's just a little typical okay. neighborhood conversation. All right. All right, then this one I will take. Yeah. So this one says wait, but. I feel like this is more on the personal side. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to say that the next level of commitment that you're making towards yourself or to somebody else, there needs to be a little pause. I feel like you're not really 100% yet. And I'm going to say that the whole idea of career versus personal, like you can't have it all. I feel like right now it's not a good time to have it all. So really focus on that career path that you're going after and the personal will fall into place. The right person, and this doesn't mean that the person that's in your life may not be the right. They're just going through their own personal change. And the moment they adjust, then they'll be ready for you. But they need to grow. While you grow professionally, they can grow personally. And when you meet them at the next rest stop, mm -hmm. then you'll be fine, yeah. if that makes sense. It does make sense. Okay. There you go. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you <laughs> Thank for being here. Um, Again, uh, well, you haven't told them. Tell the folks where they can find you if they want to look you up. Oh, you can find me at your local bus stop <laughs> in West Hollywood. Uh, you can find me at underscore. Someone has my name. No way. And she hasn't posted in two years. Go send her a message. She posts, <laughs> uploads pictures of plants. With a real Jenny Jennings, Jenny. please stand up. <laughs> Sorry. You can find me at underscore Jenny Jennings on Instagram. Cool. And that's your most popular Yes, I, I'm act, more active on yeah. there than cool. anywhere else. Or And Twitter's the same underscore Jenny Jennings. So. Cool. So for those of you watching, Jenny Jennings will be here tonight at Barefoot Comedy here at 1702 Lincoln Boulevard in Venice. Have a great show. Thanks Have a good so set. Send us to meet you. you. I'll Thank you. I'll see you on down. We'll see you on down. Okay. I'll see you <laughs> So see guys, just when you think it's just a regular little talk show, ha ha, no, uh, we do uh, card readings here too, so I don't know why I'm looking here instead of up here. Oh sweet, do you know who we have? Is she brunette or blonde? <laughs> That's right, the last time we were here. I was at another show, doing a pre-show show, another event, and the girl that I interviewed there had changed her hair. When she got here, I didn't recognize her. Thank you for those of you who are sticking around. This is Daniel Garza, and I am at the Barefoot Comedy pre-show show, and we are talking to the comedians before they go on, on Lava Sage. Oh, it's almost 7 o'clock, actually. Uh, it's five minutes still. We're going to give the other comedian one more chance, see if she gets a chance to come up here. Do you know what she looks like? Okay. We're going to give her a chance, see if she comes up here and interview her. Because I feel like people are not here yet. I feel like it's a little quiet. 
I think it's a little quiet, so we probably have a little chance to go over the hour. So we're going to try and do that for you guys. Uh, Daniel Garza, uh, pre-show show for Bedford Comedy at 1702 Lincoln Boulevard. Uh, behind the camera and watching the screen is Christian Ramirez, my partner and boyfriend. Uh, he does an awesome job. Uh, so uh, are, you, are you trying to sneak in? You can probably see him in the mirror back here. You, where's the mirror? Right there. You can see the mirror. Hi. Are, are you the Hi. other comedian? How are you doing? I am. Come on over and have a seat. Cool. So you are Jacqueline. Oh, yes. How do you pronounce your last name? Marfuji. Marfuji. So I was saying it right the first time. And then I, I did I did different, different derivatives of the G's. You did? It, yes. Where is that oh. last name from? Um, it is from Italy. Okay. Yeah. Although a lot of people think it might be like Asian descent, like oh. more for my dad, like his okay. name's Phil. They thought his name was Philmar and his last name was Fuji. <laughs> Very weird. I don't know. I was going for a Greek descent, but Ooh. It, yeah, I thought it was like Greek. But, I'll take that. But, but Italian sounds good. You're very pretty, may I say that? Um, I painted it on. Did Thank you? you. Yes. Good. Yes. So don't be fooled, folks. She, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was like paint by numbers. It's a scary art project in my bathroom. Well, right I'm now. about to do drag for another event. Shut up. Maybe we could. You can give me some pointers. Oh my God! Yes. Everything. <laughs> I will tell you all my secrets. First of all, spray your face with hairspray to set your makeup. That's my secret. Really? Yes. You heard it here, folks. This is not your regular neighborhood talk show. <laughs> We've not heard that from, like, ever. Queen, I'm really? Sorry. Yeah. We've never seen that at RuPaul. I mean, who knows? My face will probably fall off in 10 years. <laughs> I'm okay with that. And then and then we'll have, like, Three a... Thank you. you. You'll be the belt comedian. Yes. Oh, my God. That's so cool that you're doing that. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. We're, uh, there's my a... Uh, there's a uh, an agency in Orange County, yeah, Shanti Orange County, which what is up? which is doing a drag pageant. Yeah, they invited me to come and do card readings for them because I do card readings, and so I, I thought, why don't I do it in drag? Oh my gosh, so, I love it! So we're buy we went and bought some clothes yesterday. What are you wearing? Uh, this really nice. It's called. It's kind of like a. It's a gypsy. He's gonna be a gypsy. Yeah, a gypsy. It's like a peasant skirt. Yeah. Ooh. And scarf and a head scarf yeah, and I got the wig and. Oh wig. Yes, yes. Yeah. I've got this Jacqueline yeah. Smith hair going on. Do you know it's, that's who I'm named after? <gasps> no way. Yes. Yes way. And. I love really? Yes. Oh, she was my favorite yeah. angel. Um. Yeah, apparently, please. my parents too. <laughs> Yes, um, we go to the same dry cleaners, actually. What? Yes, oh my God. yes. I, I, I need to show up as her. You do. <laughs> it was funny because the first time I walked in, I spell it like her, and the little like Asian woman was like, "Oh my gosh, she's so much tinier than you." <laughs> How do you answer that? I know. I was like, yeah, I know. She's also twice my age. Calm down. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Jacqueline, are you from California originally? No, okay. I'm from Jersey. Oh, are you from Jersey? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, how long have you been out here? I've been out here for over a decade. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I feel like I'm from, everyone says I sound like a valley girl that like grew up in Jersey. It's weird. Like, I don't even sound like I'm from Jersey. It's so weird. Yeah, I would have, we thought... The, uh, oh shit! I just forgot her name. She was from. I thought she was the one from New York. Oh really? And yeah. So we are. Who is that? Jenny. Jenny. Jenny yes. Oh, I love Jenny. Hi guys. Oh my gosh. Um, Chris, how much time do we have? <laughs> okay. What's up, Ma? How, you how you doing, guys? How are you? How you doing? Hey, I'm Patrick. How's it going? How's it going? Patrick, yeah. Patrick yeah. Quinn, come on over. Oh, have a seat yes. with us. Oh, my gosh. Let's have a three-way. Oh, we're three-way up right now? Gosh. Oh, now baby. I know why I came to do this show. Oh, baby. This is it right here. And you are... Smoke shows? I'm Sylvia. Oh, hi. Yeah. You, you're not on the show tonight. Damn, you're not on the show tonight. No, no okay, got it, got it. I am a comic. Okay. Uh, and then that's DJ, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, DJ. Come on over. Have a... Get in here, DJ. Yeah, get in. See, here. DJ wore cool socks because he knew about the whole socks, the shoes yeah, on. Yeah, I didn't know I that have thing. that pair. Look at my I got some dirty oh, ass, shitty socks. I, I didn't know, even, I like man. have like you got shitty your, pedicure. Your, your sock list? Yeah. So, how are you guys doing? Thing. So, welcome to Listen, the. I feel great. Welcome to the Barefoot Comedy Pre Show Show. 
Uh, cool. Did they tell you about the pre show? I usually come and you know show what? Me out every show. Somebody mentioned it, and I, I'm not even gonna try and lie to you guys. I just woke up. I fell. Asleep. My, I lay down to go. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay down for a second, put some clothes on. Then I woke up. I was like, oh my god! And I started rushing. You have a the show. Yeah. <laughs> I did not mean to. I fell. Asleep. I just. I don't I'm know. so jealous. I'm a bad person. You are. I just came from bartending all day. From bartending. I was hustling, I but I invited them here. Chad and oh, Jonathan should be downstairs. So for the folks watching, can you you want to introduce yourselves and, and tell who you are? Uh, I'm DJ Sandu, and I am nobody. Damn. <laughs> I'm Patrick Quinn. I'm also nobody. Oh. <laughs> I'm Jacqueline Marfuji, and I'm a Jersey girl. There we go. And that's that's a somebody. Yeah. So Thank you. Uh, basically, we do the pre-show show so that the audience at home or the people that get here and when they log in can get to meet you guys before the show starts. Oh, this is great. What yeah. a good idea. So that's before so cool. next time you're back, just know that I get here at six o'clock. Oh, and, uh, perfect. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that we do because we're gonna run out of time is no. we pull out love cards. Oh, no, man. Oh. What, what does this mean? Is this, like, going to tell you what's going to happen in our life? No. I'm doing no. some weird shit with love right now. Okay. So, oh. What's going on? Okay, well, then you go I first. I can't get too deep into it, dude. Right. I, just, I just don't know what's going on. I don't know, I don't know what love is anymore. I want to know what love is. I want to know what love is. And this is the kind of show we have here. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh. That means you're got, abundantly oh, in love. Look yeah. at all those cards you pulled. <laughs> Jeez. That's a guy who little bit. Read it? Okay. Oh, Creativity. You love to devise new ideas, innovations, and forms of illumination. Ooh, may I borrow that? Yes, you may. All right, so, um... The, the typical way that you are meeting people is not working for you anymore. So it's really important to, although your professional life may stay in the same realm, your personal life is growing up. So you need to grow up. So... Hear, yeah. That one more time. <laughs> so it's really important that get at this, gender. that you just, uh, and yeah, it doesn't mean get off gender, but the choice of companions that you're making, oh. if you want it long term, then you got to pick something different. If you keep picking the same thing, then it's going to taste the same. So go after something new and you'll get something new. Pick the right wow. Does that make sense? That, that does, does make, make sense. sense. Yeah, thank you. Would wow. you like to put one? This is really cool. I'm going to get a video of us doing this. Yeah. This is really cool. No, we're going to do her before we walk up. I, somehow I, her energy is just yelling at me for some reason. Oh, no. No, not bad. No, no, no. <laughs> I have humility. Uh, oh. It's fitting. <laughs> you, have, you have developed the loving awareness that you and everyone else are the same, but on different paths. All right. So for you... There, I feel, and not knowing you, I feel like there's, um, there's a project, an event, something that you've done in your life recently that has kind of made you step ahead of or advanced of. I don't feel like I'm announcing it yet, and I'm tapping into your energy. We're not ready to announce where we're going or where we're headed yet, but it's going to happen, and this is going to propel you a little higher. So the universe is just prepping you to take your place where you belong now. It's kind of like you've been shopping dollar store for a long time, and now you're going to a real grocery store. Oh, you actually know me. Yeah, so it's it's <laughs> it's time to go to the real grocery store and shop. You don't you don't have to shop at a dollar store anymore. You you you've earned your spots, your bruises, and your bumps. Own it, live up to it, and you're gonna find a bigger door to go through. Does that make sense? Yeah, man, dude. Doesn't it make you feel good when someone talks about you? Right? <laughs> so much It's such a good Tell feeling, more. man. Uh, I'm uh, dope. Uh, dope. Uh, like, I know I'm dope, but just talk more about me, bro. It's the best. I'm fucking amazing. But talk oh, man. Uh, tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> Tolerance. Uh, you appreciate other points of view because you sense the love in everyone. Ooh. All right. Uh, you press, 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 press. Can I tell you something funny? Sure. When I was in high school, I was a part of a group, and our name was T3, which stood for Teeny Tiny Tolerance. Ooh. <laughs> That's how the shows work, so Bring the girls in That's here. how the shows yeah. <laughs> um, So... I just, I just saw that movie again the other day. It's really important. Um, 
I feel like either a you're about. I feel like you're mentoring, you're teaching, you're you're involving people. So either there's a way of of showing people what you do or how you do it. But I don't feel. I feel like it's beyond comedy. I feel like there's some other aspect of your life that you are teaching, you're showing. I want to learn from you, and your energy is trying to show people. So, if you're writing a book, a how to. If you're doing videos on on how to be live or something, but I feel like I want to talk about live. Um, if there's something in your projects where you are going to educate people or mentor or, or motivate, this is a really good time to start that project. You are in your light right now. Don't miss it because you're overjudging yourself. But it's as simple as it sounds in your head. To somebody else, it's gonna sound amazing. like that idea you just gave us about the hairspray. Yeah. To us, it was like the greatest thing ever, and you're like. <laughs> And you're like, it's just hairspray on my face. Like, and we're like, oh my shit, that's awesome. Own your own your shit right now, because you're you're in it right now. Oh wow. Does that make sense? Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I, I want to cry, but I don't want my eyelash to. No, cry. don't. Because uh, I will I will judge you. I will. To we're gay. We're gay. We'll judge you right now. Exactly. She's crying no, on the show. You're like, guys, Here, can I, can he's I legit. Do, do you want to do one? Sure. Can I, can I try? Yes. Okay. All right. So we get I never, I never have a guy offer me that. Well. Guess what? Welcome, welcome to this guy. What we got here? Let's see what we got here. Okay, let's go ahead and read that. It says, kindness. Kindness. You are a humanitarian made of love, and you are able to share that energy with others. All right. Well, it's going to be us three. We're going to tell you what we think about this one. So, kindness. So, Swing and a miss on that one, I got to say. Is that uh, right? You think, it's, you think it does not line up at all? Just, right? just nothing but hate and shade ever since I've walked in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? Just couldn't be. What do you, what do you, what's your first take on this, Jacqueline? Oh, gosh, you are a sassy bitch. That's actually what's happening with you. And you need to own it and rock it and just live your best life. Does that make sense? I do. I, th I agree with that. And I, here's what I will say about that. I think that sometimes kindness is, is misjudged as weakness. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that – I think that you're a very kind person. And maybe at times you kind of feel like you're taking advantage of. But the kindness will shine through in the end. And you're going to find somebody who's very, very special for you and very right for you. Oh, this is your boy. This is your husband or boyfriend right here. Okay. Well, then guess what? Then I guess I was right because he's right here. He's like so the ki the kind because I feel like sometimes I I'm I feel like I'm too kind sometimes and I feel like it's it's people see that as as a sign of weakness, right? Mm -hmm. But the kindness shines through and people eventually will gravitate towards that. Okay. The crazy thing about this, we were just at dinner, uh -huh. and one of the things that my, our closest friends know about me is that if I'm really nice to you. I don't like you. Oh. If if I'm if I'm really nice to you, yeah. But the moment I sass you or I, yeah. you're in my you're you're in. You're, you're in. Yeah. Okay, cool. But if I turn around, if I've already been a bitch to you, yeah. but then I'm nice to you, you're never gonna come back. You're not. You're out. You're out. You're out. You're done. You're done. You're dead. Yeah. 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 So, people. People tell other people the moment that he's mean to you or says something snappy, yeah. you're in. You're oh, in. I, I will. I will read for you. I will give you my gifts. Like, what can I do for you? Oh, I love it. But it, awesome. but if you if I don't, then well, for, I, for me, I'm the, I'm the same way. But for me, it's because I give people the permission to treat me a certain way. Mm -hmm. So when I'm being snappy at you and I'm saying like mean things to you, it's because I'm giving you permission to do the same to me. Yeah. I agree. But if I don't respect you. Then I'm gonna be very nice because you're only allowed to be nice to me. Like, because I won't take a snappy comeback from you if I don't respect you. That was totally towards white people. So yeah, yeah no. I, I was feeling yeah. that. I feel like yeah. I agree with that. Completely towards white people. Pritesh Clearly is just a hate, perfect example. When I met Pritesh, I thought he was a dick. I hated him. And then. You told me that numerous yes, times. Yes, I, I have to say it again. Yeah, look at but it. then we. Perfect hair then he was on my dude. podcast, and I got to meet him. Uh -huh. And now now we become buddies. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I go to him for questions. And I think he's one of the best person. Yeah. Podcast, podcast can change every opinion about oh somebody. Gosh, well, I'm going to give you all my cards. So you can oh, I love, love it. Yeah, yeah. I have you can you sit down with an hour for somebody, and you're like. Before we go, tell people where they can find you. Oh. Oh, okay. So we gotta hurry up. I'm. Oh, no. nice. Ooh. Beautiful. Cool. I'm Jacqueline Marfuji. I have a podcast called What's Your Jersey on iTunes and Audio Boom, and you can find me at my name on all social media and downstairs in about five minutes. <laughs>
My name is uh, Patrick Quinn. You can find me. Uh, my socials are all I'm, I'm Pat Quinn. And I have two podcasts, but they're not coming out yet. They're, I'm just saving them up. we got like eight in the can right now. So get ready to come out. So just I'm Pat Quinn uh, and all social. Uh, DJ Sandu, and that's DJ S-A-N-D-H-U-2-0 on all social media things. And uh, I also have a podcast coming out very soon. <laughs> who doesn't, who doesn't this have a is, podcast in LA? This is the... <laughs> This is the pro. This is one of the projects that like went through my head when you did my little reading right now. Was I was like, "Is it this, this, this?" I have like five things that are in the next week or so. I'll have have like final word on. Uh, but the podcast is gonna be called "Everything's Racist" with DJ Sandu, and uh, basically the whole premise is we take a story that happened this week that is obviously racist, and then we sarcastically explain why it isn't racist at all. And then we take a story that is not racist and we make it racist unnecessarily. Nice. So it's going to be super fun. We need to talk. We need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> we're waiting for my inner racist to come out. Yeah. Oh, it's the best. I think it's I was racist before I was gay. So that's, I think I was that's racist before I was gay. That's a really that fucking lot. You better say that. Yeah. That should be the name of your book. That's your fucking You're like, Granddad, how did you know that you're racist? It's like, oh, I always knew I was racist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before I, I was born racist. I knew it wasn't going to be black. <laughs> before anything came yeah. in. <laughs> before anything came in, things came in. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you for being on the show. This is great. Daniel, thank you, man. This is so fun. We're going to say goodbye. Thank you for joining us on the pre show show. Here at Barefoot Comedy, uh, 1702 Lincoln Avenue, here in Venice. Come join us. Start 7 o'clock. If you missed it today, we'll see you next time. We love you guys. Bye-bye.